After leaving PSG, it didn't take us too long before we got a new job in Spain with Villarreal. And I think we put in a good account for ourselves in our first season, finishing in second place. Reaching the Copa del Rey semi-final. We also have one of the best players in the world. And I've just created a fantastic partnership with my youth graduate, Yago, and new striker, Agony. They aren't exactly the best looking players in the world, but it's just been working well. We've also secured the signing of a fantastic French goalkeeper on a free transfer. But the board have only given us £32 million to spend, which isn't going to be enough to improve our defence. Because the defender I'm targeting has a release clause for £51 million pounds so I'll have to sell to buy. In other news, Luis Enrique was sacked after just one season at PSG. They finished in second place behind that very good Monaco side. They ended up hiring the current Everton and former England manager Raphael Wicky instead. To start raising funds, I also sold 32-year-old defender Coppola to Inter Milan for 8.5 million and the Albanian midfielder Gini to Leon for 6 million raising our budget to just £52 million, enough to sign the defender we wanted. So we put in the bid to match his minimum fee release clause to Batiste. And he was happy to join us, definitely a step up in quality for us defensively and younger than our current defenders too. Liverpool have just put in a bid for the striker I wanted last year. Hilariously though, he rejected the move. But then he eventually signed for Real Madrid on deadline day. I also found this insane attacking midfielder from Sweden playing at El Shabab in Saudi Arabia and I was shocked to discover I could afford him by moving available wage budget across to the transfer budget. Karl Manfquist is a fantastic player. Technically, he is a bit of a wizard, but he has also got fantastic vision and leadership. The start of our season sees us play a little bit more of the lower half of the table, so I'm hoping for a good start. And the Getafe game to kick things off had us flying out the blocks with our midfield really shining through. Persic scored from the first from range. The second goal came from a fantastic work down the right wing and our other centre midfielder Svoboda slotted home and I was chuffed as punch for the third with Malmquist scoring on his debut. He also set up agony in the 1-0 win against Mallorca. It was the day that we lost Svoboda though for three months so I needed to bring in some backup. So he signed two long deals, a Mexican player from Arsenal who can play play in midfield and at both fullback positions, and a Spanish CDM from Barcelona as well who could also play at centre-back. Champions League fixtures are in and we go away to the Italian champions Napoli in the first contest, ending with former club Leipzig and of course Francisco and Manchester United. Our first tricky match of the season came away to Real Sociedad when they took the lead in the 29th minute through Sebastian Farah. But a month quiz free kick from miles out brought an equaliser when Agony banged in the rebound. Just before half-time, Mountquist was involved once again, and this time Pesic found the net to put us 2-1 up. Then Real Sociedad scored an own goal, so cheers for that, with substitute and 35-year-old Gonzalo Ramos scoring a fourth. Nothing to show in the Champions League match, though. Nil-nil finish. Dull. Agony was back in the goals, picking up two in the following 3-0 win against Espanyol. Good to see that he's continued his form from the end of last season. And in the next game from Malmquist to Albors to Agony in yet another 3-0 win against Batiste, in which Garitano scored against his old club. Our performances have been so good, we've been getting a lot of bids for our players. Six wins in and we are neck and neck with Real Madrid and Barcelona all on 18 points until it all went downhill because we suffered back-to-back -back draws against Granada and Las Palmas and Pesic even missed a penalty the bloody spud followed by losing to a 94th minute goal against Valencia at home and a 1-0 loss. So we went from non-stop scoring to not scoring in three league games and we have some big games coming up in November you cannot miss. Thankfully, we did manage to win the last game of October against Real Sporting and Agony was back in the goals too, picking up his first hat-trick of the season in the 4-0 win. But unfortunately, Real Madrid didn't drop any points in that time and we now sit seven points behind them just like that. Well, we bounced right back, stuffing Celta Vigo 8-0. In the Champions League, we beat Chelsea 1-0 thanks to a 91st minute Gonzalo Ramos goal and jot down the 9th of November for performance of the season as we visited the new Camp. We snagged the first Let's go right on the cusp of half time, but the second half we continue to shut them out, scoring two more goals, defeating them 3 0. Also, only keeping them to just two shots with zero on target. And we kept up the great form, defeating Bilbao. And in the Champions League, Agony once again had a glorious day, scoring a hat trick against Ajax, who in the next match also scored a 95th minute goal against Sevilla. 
which rescued a point for us after being 2-0 down and 3-1 down. We faced Marseille in the Champions League before our match against the champions Real Madrid and we are confident with goals coming in from our two attacking midfielders in the 2-1 win. But unfortunately Real are still way too strong for us. We had the chance to equalise at 1-0 down from the penalty spot too but Gonzalo Ramos missed the chance to change the trajectory of the game. We did not let that affect our confidence though, smashing through the next three league games without conceding the goal including a 4-0 away win to Atletico. The Ballon d'Or for 2036 was won by my old world-class striker Francisco, who's about to hit his prime seasons now, and we play him this month. We also go into January, still have no transfer budget remaining, so expect a quiet window. But we did start our Copa del Rey campaign against our wonderful team named Zamora CF. Shout out to Bobby Zamora, by the way. And we beat them quite comfortably, 5-0. With Yago winning man of the match after picking up the first two goals of the game, off the back of some fantastic work by Agony also, a combination I'm still loving seeing. We of course then faced our former side Leipzig in the Champions League and I fell behind 1-0, but we popped up in the 89th minute with an equaliser from substitute Peter Gonzalez. Before getting tonked by Manchester United in our last league phase game though, with them scoring two goals from their phenomenal striker Danielson Silva, who doesn't sound French, but he is, and they picked him up from Nice a few seasons ago for over £120 million. That result left it really tight in the league phase and we somehow still scraped into the top 8 qualifying to the round of 16. Maybe winning the league is out of our reach already though despite it only being January and us being in second place because Real Madrid have played 21 and won 21. Klopp is absolutely cooking at age 69. So let's focus on the Copa del Rey because our fourth round tie is away to Ibar and Iago has given us the lead in the ninth minute. A fast attack starting with Fonseca at the back brings on Iago's second goal and in the second half and then again starting with Fonseca just two passes and Marcel is through and scores a third. Straight into the quarterfinal away to Celta Vigo and the combination of Manquist and Adrian Mar sees us go 2-0 up in just 12 minutes both from corners. However what is going on with our goalkeeper here just allowing Celta Vigo to just give the ball to them and score. Luckily Mar got his hat trick though again from a corner and still we're in the first half. Celta did then score a wonderful free kick but we put ourselves through to the semi-final of a beautiful team goal scored by our left back. The third Copa del Rey match in a row now and it's the first leg of the semi-final away to Granada but with goals from Javier Alborz and Agony in just 25 minutes we got into our groove and in the second half Agony scored his second and we head into that second leg 3-0 up. We had an easy task progressing through to the final further than what we got last year with a 4-1 win in the second leg at home despite Granada scoring after just six minutes. Once again in the Champions League though, we've been drawn against Manchester City. No surprise either that the team that we'll be facing in the Copa del Rey final is either Real Madrid or Barcelona. Right, on to Manchester City in the Champions League and we've had a very entertaining contest against our former club. After Moises Caicedo levelled the score, Svoboda within four minutes fired us back ahead on Manchester City at the Etihad. But of course, never count them out. They equalised in this first leg in the 89th minute. Again from a player who looks absolutely incredible. But that same player missed a penalty in the second leg. The penalty that cost Manchester City from progressing to the next round in the penalty shootout after extra time. Pun us against, of course, Real Madrid in the next round just before the cup final. Probably against Real Madrid. What an intense month that's going to be. We got a huge win during March in between the Manchester City games, however, beating Las Palmas 8-0. And Real finally dropped some points in the league, drawing and losing their first matches of the season. They're still 18 points clear, however. When we faced them in the first leg of the Champions League, though, they were showing us exactly why they have been that good. We actually managed to snag an equaliser, though, and I was naively confident, because after that, they battered us. Their high press was intense. They were so difficult to break down and they were lethal on the counter-attack. Extremely clinical and they put us away with a 4-1 loss. We somehow won the second leg, but our Champions League run this season was over. And of course, they also beat Barcelona and met us in the final of the Copa del Rey. But there was only one goal in this cup final scored by the team in yellow. The underdogs of the Copa del Rey final after being completely swept in all of the competitions by Real Madrid, we held on strong. Keeper keeping a clean sheet against the strongest attack I think I've ever seen, including that striker we wanted to sign. And 
Villarreal are your 2037 Copa del Rey winners. With that being our 11th different trophy that we have won in Glory Hunters so far, with just one remaining, which definitely won't be winning this season. However, we go down as a Villarreal legend already because that Copa del Rey win is their first in the competition and only their second major trophy the club has ever won alongside that Europa League win in 2021. We ended the season once again losing in the lead to Real Madrid, but with a very strong four-game win streak at the end without conceding another goal. 23 points behind Real Madrid, who still won 36 out of 38 games, which is absolutely insane. Agony, though, is your top scorer of the league, an incredible triumph. Across the season, he got 43 goals in 58 games, but Carl Manquist was easily the MVP for me, with 23 goals and 26 assists. The 24-year-old Swede was exceptional for us this season and was the catalyst for all of our success, I'm sure. The board, however, only given us £24 million, pounds. we don't have much to build around with him to catch Real Madrid. And Klopp still isn't going anywhere with him being very satisfied with life at the minute. 